Once upon a time, in a far off land, there lived a kindly gentleman. He had a fine home and a lovely little daughter, and he gave her all the money he could buy a pony of her own, a fine puppy, dog, and beautiful dresses to wear. But the little girl had no mother. She longed for a mother and for other children to play with. So her father married a woman with two daughters. Now, with a new mother and sisters, he thought his little daughter had everything to make her happy. But Alice, the kindly gentleman, soon died. His fine home fell into disrepair, and his second wife was harsh and cold. She cared only for her own two ugly daughters. To her lovely stepdaughter, she was cruel as cruel as could be. Everyone called the stepdaughter Cinderella now, for she had to work hard. She was dressed in rags, and she sat by the cinders to keep herself warm. Her horse grew old, legged up in the barn, and her dog was not allowed in the house. But do you suppose Cinderella was sad? Not a bit. She made friends with the birds who flew to her windowsill. She became friends with the barnyard chickens and geese. And her best friends of all were, is who? The mice. The mossy old house was full of mice. Their homes were in the attic, where Cinderella lived. She made little clothes for them and gave them all names. And they saw Cinderella was the sweetest, most beautiful girl in the world. Every morning, Cinderella's friends, the monks and birds, woke her from her dreams. Then it was breakfast time for the household, with Cinderella doing all the work, of course. Out on the back steps, she set a bowl of milk for the stepmother's disagreeable cat, who watched for his chance to catch the mice. The faithful dog had a tasty bone. There was grain for the chickens and dogs and geese. A Cinderella gave some grain to the mice. When they were out of reach of the cat, of course, then back into the house she went. After the long stairway, she carried breakfast trays for her stepmother and her two lazy stepsisters. And down, she came with a basket of menu, some clothes to wash, and a long list of jobs to do for the day. Now, let me see, the stepmother would say, um, you can clean the large carpet in the main hall and wash all the windows, upstairs and down. Scrub the ter- terrace, sweep the stairs, and then you may rest. Oh, says Cinderella. Yes, and after all, she went. Now across the tile from Cinderella's home was a palace of the king. And in the king's study, one day, sat the king himself giving orders to the grandeur. 
The prince was married, exclaimed the king. It is fine time. For your majesty, uh, what can we do? Asked the grand duke. First, he must fall in love. We can arrange that, said the king. We shall give a great ball this very night and invite every girl in the land. There was great excitement in St. Luna's hall when the invitations to the king's ball arrived. How delightful! The substitutes said to each other, We are going to the palace to a ball. And now? said Cinderella. I'm invited too. Oh, you? The substitutes laughed. Yes, you. My the mother. Of course you may go. If you finish your work, she said, and if you have something to wear, I said, eh. And she is wearing the horrid as well. Cinderella walked as hard as she could all the long day. But when it was time to leave for the ball, she had not a moment to fix herself up or to give insult to the dress. Why, Cinderella, you are not ready, said the stepmother, and the coach was at the door. No, I'm, uh, I'm not playing, said Cinderella sadly. Not playing? Oh, what a shame. The stepmother said Peter mocking his wife, but there will be other balls. Poor Cinderella. She went to her room and sat down Sally with her head in hands. But the tweeting sound soon made her turn around. Her little friends had not forgotten her. They had been scampering and flying about, fixing a party dress for her. Oh, how lovely! She cried. I can't thank you enough. She told all the birds and the bees. She looked out the window. The coach was still there, so she started to dress for the ball. Wait, by Cinderella, I'm coming too. She ran down the long stairway, just as the stepmother was giving her daughter some, some last commands. At the sound of Cinderella's voice, they all turned and stirred. My beads! cried one stepsister, and my ribbon, right the other, snatching up Cinderella's sash, and those bows. You, thief, those are mine. So they pulled and they ripped and they tore at the dress, until Cinderella was in rags one swore. And then, they flounced up to the ball. Cinderella. She ran to the garden behind the house, and there she sank down onto a low stone bench and wept as if her heart would break. But soon she felt someone beside her. She looked up, and um, through her tears, she saw a sweet faced little woman. Oh, says Cinderella. Good evening, um, who are you? I'm your fair good mother, said the little woman, and from the sea air she pulled a magic wand. Now, dry your tears, we can't go to the ball looking like this. Let's see now, the first thing you will need is a pumpkin, the fair good mother said. Cinderella didn't understand, but she brought the pumpkin. And now for the magic words, Ibiti Bibiti Boo! said the fairy good mother. Slowly, I'll wear the pumpkin on its pumpkin wine 
and it turned into a handsome magic coat. What we need next are some fine big mice. She turned up with her friends with the mice and at the touch of the wand, they turned into a prancing horses. Then the old horse became a fine coachman. And Bruno, the dog, turned into a footman at the touch of the wand and the beepity beepity pool. There, said the fairy good mother, now, happy child, you've no time to waste. The magic only lasts till midnight. And what we dress? Cinderella said, looking at her rats. Look at this, son, exclaimed the fairy good mother. Of course, you can't go in that. Bibidi bibidi boo. The dead one to wait again, and there Cinderella stood in the most beautiful gown in the world, with tiny slippers of black. The princess ball was on her way. The palace was ablaze with light. The ballroom gleamed with seals and jewels, and the princess mind and bowed, but still looked bored as all the young ladies of the kingdom in turn curtsied before him. Up above on a balcony stood the king and the grand duke, looking up of whatever is the matter with the prince cried the king, doesn't seem to care for any of those beautiful maidens. I feared as much, um, said the crowd with a sigh. shot. Princess not want to love him at first shot. But at that very moment, he did. For just then, Cinderella appeared at the doorway of the bungalow. The priest caught sight of her through the crowd, and like one in a tree, he walked to her side and offered his arm. Quickly, the king beckoned to the musicians and they struck up a dreamy waltz. The prince and Cinderella's room to cross the dance floor, and the king, taken over the success of his plan to find the bride for the prince, Lived happily of to be. All evening, the prince was at Cinderella's side. They danced every dance. They ate supper together. And Cinderella had such a wonderful time that she quite forgot the fair good mother's warning of the clock and the palace tower began to strike midnight. Bong, bong. Oh. Christ and Rena, the magic was about to end. Without a word, she ran from the ballroom, down the long palace hall, and out the door. One of her little glass slippers flew off, but she could not stop. She leaped into her coach and the way they raced for home, but as they rounded the first corner, the clock finishes its drops. The spell was broken, and there in the street stood an old horse, a dog, and a girl in rats, staring at a small brown pumpkin. Some boys ran chattering about them. Glassy sleeper! The mice cried, Glassy sleeper! And Cinderella looked down. Sure enough, there was a glass of slipper on the pavement. Oh, thank you, good mother, she said. The next morning, there was great excitement in the palace. The king was furious when he found out that this brown dude had let the beautiful girl sleep away. All he could find was this one glass of slipper the grand duke admitted. And now the princess he must marry the girl who this slipper fits. He will not marry anyone else. He did, cried the king. He said um, he would marry her. 
Well then find her. Scour the king and find that girl. All day and all night the Grand Duke and his servant traveled about the kingdom, trying to find the food and which the glass slipper would fit. In the morning, his coach drove out in front of Cinderella's house. The news of the search had run on ahead, and the stepmother knew was busy rousing her ugly daughters and preparing them to greet the ground. For she was determined that one of them should wear the slipper and be the prince's bride. The prince's bride? This person Drella was dressed too. The Grand Duke must not find me like this. Cinderella went off to her room to dress, humming a waltzing too played the ball the night before. Then, the stepmother suspected the truth. Sindrek was the girl that the prince was seeking. So she followed Cinderella to neck her in a room. The mice chattered a warning, but Cinderella didn't hear that. She was off in a world of peace. Then she heard the key click. That who was not? Please let me out, oh please, she cried, but the weak stepmother only laughed and went away. We will save you, said the lovely mice, we will somehow get that key. The household was in a tizzy. The grand duke had arrived, his servant held the glass slipper. It is mine, it is mine. Both the subsisters cried, and each strained and pushed and tried to force her foot into the tiny glass of sleep, but they failed. Meanwhile, the mice made themselves into a long chain. The mouse at the end dropped down into the stepmother's pocket. He popped up again with the key to Cinderella's room. At once, the mice hurried off with the key. Now the Grand Duke was at the door, about to leave. Suddenly, Cinderella came flying down the stairs. Wait, wait please, she called. May I try the slipper on? Of course, said the Grand, and he called the servant back with the slipper. But the weak stepmother tricked the boy. The slipper fell and hushed. Splintered into a thousand pieces. Oh my, oh my, said the Grand Duke. What can I ever tell the king? Never mind, said Cinderella. I have the other one here. And she pulled an other glass sleeper from her pocket. So off to the palace went Cinderella in the king's own coat, with a happy Grand Duke by her side. The prince was delighted to see her again. So was his father, the king, and so was everyone. For this sweet and beautiful girl won the hearts of all who met her. Soon she was princess of the land, and she and her husband, the charming prince, rode to their palace in a golden coat and lead. Happily ever after. It is an end of the story. Good night, honey.